we'll do treasure. Let's change this graphic so that we. What just happened? What just happened? No way did it just crash on me. Okay, so this is take three of this tutorial, YouTube. The first time it crashed on me, the second time was my fault, admittedly. And so now we're on take three of trying to make this tutorial. This is how to have different inventories if you have multiple parties. So if you have a character that leaves the party or if you have two different parties entirely, maybe they have different stories going on. This is how you'll separate their inventories, okay? Now, the two parties that we'll have just for testing purposes, one the party one will be Reed and Priscilla, and party two will just be Gale. Uh, the items we'll be using are the potion, the magic water, and the stimulant. Now, there's no limit to how many items you can store, um, you know, for a party's inventory. It's just, I'm just doing three items now to make the tutorial quick and not, you know, three hours long. So, let's make an NPC here. So, we'll choose this NPC. The first thing we want to do is I uh, will put in a comment that says if actually no, let's go ahead and do a conditional branch. If actor Reed is in the party, make sure you create an else branch. What we want to do here is we want to have this lady say something or do something different depending on whether or not you're in party one or party two. If Reed is in the party, you're in party one. So let's put a comment here. We'll say currently with Reed's party. If Reed is not in your party, which is the else handler, then we are currently in Gail's party. All right. And what we want to do is we want her to ask, do you want to switch to Gail? Okay. We're going to show choices here. Yes or no. And now let's go ahead and change out our party members. So we'll do a little fade out first. If you don't fade out the screen when you change party members, you see them change like on this, like as it's happening, like it's on the screen, you'll see characters start to fade in and out and you don't want that. So just fade out the screen. Uh, we're going to change party members. We're going to add Gail and then we are going to remove Reed and remove Priscilla. And we'll fade the screen back in. Under the else handler with Gail's party, we're going to essentially do the same thing. We're going to show choices. Whoops. Yes or no. If yes, we want to do the same thing. Fade out the screen. Except this time, we want to add Reed. Add Priscilla. And then remove Gail. And then fade the screen back in. So as it stands right now, if we talk to our NPC here, if we're if we're with Reed's party or if we have Reed's party, it's going to switch out and take us to Gale. If we have Gale's party, it's going to switch out and take us to Reed. But here's where we handle the party inventories. So right above underneath fade out, but right above change party member, we're going to go to new and we are going to control variables. What we want to do in our variable list here is you want to have six different variables for this example. We're going to have a party one potion, party one magic water, and party one stimulant. And then for the next three variables, you want to do the same thing, except they'll be party two. Okay, so we got our six variables here. We have party one, potion, magic, water, and stimulant, and then party two, potion, magic, water, and stimulant. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set party one potion to game data item and the potions current count that you have in your inventory. So this will take however many potions you have in your inventory. It's going to store it in this variable. We want to do this for each item. So we'll change this to party one, magic, water, game data magic water and then party one stimulant game data 
stimulant. Okay, next thing we want to do is we want to move, remove these items from the inventory. So we're going to go to potion, we're going to decrease, and we are going to decrease it by the amount that you have that just got stored in party one potion. And then we want to do that for each item. So we want to do magic water, decrease by party one magic water. And then stimulant, decrease by party one stimulant. Okay, now under here, under remove Priscilla, right above fade in screen, we're going to add party two's inventory in because you're switching to party two. Now, as of right now, party two doesn't have any inventory. Okay, so when it, um, all variables will start at zero. So when we increase it by party two's inventory, you're not going to have anything. But once you start having different items in each inventory, they'll, they'll save and carry over. So we want to change items. We want to increase potion by party two potion. And then we just want to do the same thing for the other two items. So increase magic water by party two magic water. And then increase stimulant by party two stimulants. Okay. And this section is done under Gale's party. When we're switching from Gale's party to Reed's party, we essentially just want to do the same thing, except we're switching party one with party two variables. So let's go ahead and set party two's potion to game data potion. Okay. We want to do that for each of the items. Make sure under this section, you're doing party two, party two, magic water, game data, magic water. And then party to stimulant, game data, stimulant. Okay. Same thing as we did up above. Then we want to decrease or take out those items that you just stored into these variables. So remove, take potion, decrease it by party to potion. We want to do that for each of the items. So magic water, decrease by party to magic water, and then stimulant decrease by party two stimulant. Okay. So now we've removed all of party two's inventory above fade in screen. We want to change items potion, and we want to increase it by party one's potion because we're adding party one's inventory back in. And we're going to do the same thing for each item. So magic water party two magic water increase and stimulant party two stimulant increase. All right. So all this is done. The only thing we need to do now is we need to create some chests that will give us these items. So quick event creation treasure. We'll do this one for potion. We'll do another one here for the magic water. And then finally we'll do the last one here for uh, stimulants. And I want to go into each of these. I don't want to turn self switch a on because that will switch it over to the next page. And I want you to just be able to continuously do this over and over again. So we can just get varying amounts of each item. All right. Now, unless I've missed something, this should work. Now this almost never goes exactly as planned. So let's, uh, let's take a look here and see. All right. So as you can see, the party we have right now is Reed and Priscilla. Whoops. We have no items. Okay. So we're going to grab a potion. Wow. That is so loud. Is it that loud for you all? Let's grab another potion. Okay. We'll grab two magic waters and then we'll grab three stimulants. Okay. So we have four potions, two magic waters and three stimulants. Okay. This is what party one has. Four, two, three. Just remember that. Four, two, and three. So let's talk to the lady here. Do you want to switch to Gale? Yes. Okay. So now we have Gale. As you can see, Gale has nothing in his inventory. What we're going to do is we're just going to grab one of each of these. Okay. So let's go into our inventory. We have one of each item. Beautiful. Now let's switch back to read. Oh, we didn't put the text on, but that <laughs> that's okay. All right, so now we're reading Priscilla again. I did not add, like, re add them in the correct order, but that's okay. We go to items. Uh oh, something went wrong here. We, uh, we must have a variable incorrect in the event flow somewhere. 
So let's take a look at this. Oh, that's why. Yeah, when we changed items, we kept it party two, not party one. So let's change this to party one stimulant. Or no, that needs to be party one magic water. I apologize. And this needs to be party one stimulant. Okay, let's give this another shot here. We'll just do the same quantities we did last time. We have four, two, three. Let's switch our parties. All right, Gale has nothing. We'll get one of each. Okay, let's look at our inventory. We have one of each item. Now let's switch back. And as you can see, we have four, two, three again with our original party here. Okay. Uh, let's grab one more of each. All right. So we now have five, three, four. Remember that? All right. Let's switch back to Gale. And as you can see, Gale's got his original one potion, one magic water, and one stimulant. So let's just grab one of each again here. All right, we'll switch back one last time. Look at that, five, three, four, perfect, perfect. Let's switch back to Gale. Two, 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 there you go. And that is how you manage split inventories. It's not as easy as you want it to be, but it's not overly difficult. So as long as you understand how variables work, you should be able to uh, to easily manage this. Now, once you get towards, you know, later in your game. So if you look at like Final Fantasy VI, right? If you were to handle split parties at the end of that game, this list would be so incredibly long. Um, unfortunately, it's the only way to do it. Now you could do, you know, you could make this a common event, right? So that you just call the common event every time and then it stores uh, every item in the game so that you only have to make this one time. Um, but it, it, there it is. That's it. This actually went swimmingly way, way better than I thought. I thought for sure I was going to screw something up. I was like, surely it can't be this easy, but, uh, but it was this easy. So if there's any mechanics that you would like to see created or recreated from another game in RPG maker, let me know. I'll do my best to create it. Um, after this one, I'm not sure what we'll do next. Honestly, we might do a magic shop. So there's a few things, the magic shop and the crafting table. They would basically be conditional brand, like uh, show text and conditional branches. They're not going to look very flashy, but I think it could serve as a way to show people how to um, require the player to have certain items and also, you know, use uh, certain currencies to like learn magic stuff like that. And they can apply that knowledge to other areas of RPG Maker. So we, we may do that, even though it won't look great. Uh, we may do, we may do that just to give somebody some extra base knowledge so thank you all for watching today i appreciate you and i'll see you in the next one bye